Okay, so hello and welcome back. So question number 10 has two parts. 10 part 1 is basically you want to prove that you want to prove that x plus 4 2x 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 x plus 4 2x 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 and x plus 4 this determinant is equal to 5x plus 4 times x minus 4 minus x whole squared so so your LHS is equal to basically this determined x plus 4 uh, 2x 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 x plus 4 and 2x and 2x and 2x and x plus 4 uh, and uh, if you apply If you apply column 1 becomes column 1 plus column 2 plus column 3 you will have basically this is going to be equal to basically x plus 4 plus 2x plus 2x which is equal to 2x plus 2x is equal to 4x 4x 5x plus 4 column 2 becomes x plus 2x is equal to 3x and that, that would be 5x um, plus 4 and here you would have x plus 4 and 2x here you would have 2x and 2x and 2x plus 2x 4x is 5x plus 4 and over here you have 2x and x plus 4 and so that would be equal to taking 5x out taking 5x plus 4 out from column 1 we will have <coughs> 5x plus 4 times the determinant 1 2x 2x 1x plus 4 2x and 1 2x x plus 4 And so you have, now if you apply, uh, applying basically, if you apply, if you apply basically R1 becomes R1 minus R2, R1 becomes R1 minus R2, and R2 becomes R2 minus R3. We have so uh, so you would get five x plus four times now r one becomes r one minus r two which is basically one minus one is equal to zero two x minus x plus four is basically two x minus six is equal to x x minus four and two x minus x two x minus two x is equal to zero r2 becomes r2 minus r3 which is basically 1 minus 1 is equal to 0 x plus 4 minus 2x is equal to negative x plus 4 and so r2 minus minus r3 would be x plus 4 minus 2x so negative x plus 4 and 2x minus x minus 4 gives us x minus 4 and then the third row is written as it is 1 2 x and x plus 4 and then you have if you expand along the first column or if you expand 
along column one, we have we have basically five x plus four. Five x plus four times um, times so, so this is zero and zero and zero, and then you have negative one raised to the this is the the the, the first column the third row so to the fourth power times one so this this whole thing is one we can forget about them and then you would have this determinant here which is x minus four zero negative x plus four and x minus four if i expand this determinant i'll get x minus four whole squared minus zero so we can forget about the zero, but this is going to be equal to x squared minus two times four squared to eight x plus sixteen. Right, so or you can write it as x minus four as x minus four whole squared. This is supposed to be 4 minus x whole squared. Okay, so now what we can do here, basically we want to write, we want to write basically this in the form 4 minus x whole squared, not, not x minus 4 whole squared. So what I'm going to do is that, is that I'm going to write this as, of course, this is x minus 4 times x minus 4 minus 0 times, for example, negative x plus 4, right? So then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to write this as, um, I'm going to write this as, of course, normally you would write this as x minus 4 whole squared, and this is 0. <coughs> But what I can do is that I can take a negative from this out and write it as negative 4 minus x. Take a negative from this out, write it, write it as 4 minus x. And negative into negative is positive, so you have 4 minus x times 4 minus x, which is going to give me basically... Uh, 4 minus x whole squared which means to say that basically actually x minus 4 whole squared is actually the same thing as 4 minus x whole of whole squared which makes sense for example if x is equal to 2 for example then x minus 4 whole squared is going to be equal to 2 minus 4 whole squared which is equal to negative 2 squared, which is equal to 4. If x is equal to 2, 4 minus x whole squared is going to be equal to 4 minus, 4 minus 2 whole squared, which is equal to 2 squared, which is equal to 4. And therefore, you can write it also as 4 minus x whole squared. And, um, and therefore, you can write it, write this whole thing as, um, as basically 4 minus x, 4 minus, instead of, instead of basically x minus 4, you can write 4 minus x whole squared. 4 minus x whole squared, right? And that is basically equal to your, that is equal to your uh, RHS. That is equal to your RHS. Now, question number 10, part 2. Question number 10, part 2. We have, basically, you want to prove that, you want to prove that this determinant, which is y plus k, y and y, y and y plus k, and y, 
and y and y and y plus k is equal to basically k squared times k squared times 3y plus k. So let's see how we can do this. Okay, so now to prove this, what you need to do is um, hopefully simple. So your LHS here is equal to is equal to y plus k, y and y, and you have y, y plus k, y, y, y and y plus k. Right? And if you apply uh, column one becomes if you apply column one becomes column one plus column two plus column three you will get basically um, three times y plus y plus y plus y is three times y plus k and y and y three times y plus k and y plus k and y and 3 times y plus k and y and y plus k and now if I take 3y plus um, taking out 3y plus k from column 1 we have This is equal to 3y plus k times the determinant, basically 1y and y, 1y plus k, y plus k, and y, and 1 and y and y plus k. And... Uh, then what you can do is that you have to apply some transformations, meaning that you have to say that applying basically R1 gives R1 gives R1 minus R2 and R2 gives R2 minus R3, right? And uh, basically, then you will have 3y plus k, 3y plus k times R1 becomes R1 minus R2, so 1 minus 1 is equal to 0, 1 minus y, mi 1, y minus y minus k is equal to negative k, that is going to be equal to 0, R2 becomes r2 minus r3 so 1 minus 1 is equal to 0 y plus k minus y is equal to k and y minus y minus k is equal to negative k and over here you have 1y and y plus k and uh, if you expand along the first column if you expand along C1 we have <coughs> we have basically um, so you would have basically 3y plus k and uh, times basically 0 and 0 so they, they are all just 0 and you have negative 1 raised to the power so you have the first column, the third is to the fourth power times 1. This is all equal to 1. And basically then you have this, this determinant here, which is negative k, 0, k, and negative k. Which is equal to positive k squared minus 0, which is equal to k squared which is equal to k squared. 
And I think that is equal to your RHS. 3dy plus k times k squared. This is equal to your RHS. So that was question number 10, part 2. Now question number 11. We have... Question number 11, we have, again, 11 has two parts. 11 part 1, we have, you want to prove that, you want to prove that basically this determinant as A minus B minus C, 2A and 2A, 2B and B minus C minus A, B minus C minus A and 2B and 2c and 2c and c minus a minus b this is equal to a plus b plus c whole q okay to show that what you can do is um, So your LHS here is equal to your LHS here is equal to A minus B minus C to A and to A to B B minus C minus A and to B to C to C and C minus A minus B and now if I apply R1 becomes applying R1 becomes R1 plus R2 plus R3 we have so you have uh, basically A minus B minus C plus 2B plus 2C that is 4 this element here so you get a 2b minus 3 is equal to b and 2c minus 3 is equal to c so that's a plus b plus c that is a plus b plus c and then you have 2a plus b minus c minus a plus 2c so 2a minus a is equal to a and uh, plus b and uh, and 2c minus c is equal to c so a plus b plus c a plus b plus c and then you have 2a plus 2b plus c minus a minus b uh, 2a minus a is equal to a 2b minus b is equal to b and c so that is a plus b plus c and these remain the same meaning that you get 2b b minus c minus a 2b 2c 2c and c minus a minus b and then what you can do is a minus a plus b plus c out from the first row taking out a plus b plus c from the from r1 we have so you have a plus b plus c times one and one and one you have 2b b minus c minus a 2b 2c 2c and c minus a minus b and then you can write this this one over here and uh, <coughs> if you apply if you apply column one gives column one minus column 2 column 1 minus column 2 and column 2 gives 
column 2 minus column 3 we will have uh, <coughs> so column 1 minus column 2 so you will have a plus b plus c times uh, column 1 minus column 2 1 minus 1 is equal to 0 2b minus b plus c plus a so you have to write it as 2b minus b minus c minus a and that becomes 2b minus b plus c my plus a so uh, that becomes basically 2b minus b is equal to b plus a plus c plus c which is the same thing as a plus b plus c so uh, what was i doing here i was doing column one becomes column one minus column two okay so uh, this is now column one so this is a plus b plus c and then again uh, 2c minus 2 is equal to 0 and also column 2 is column 2 minus column 3 meaning that 1 minus 1 is equal to 0 and then you have b minus c minus a minus 2b then you have negative a and negative 2b plus b is negative b negative c so you have negative a negative b negative c and uh, column 2 minus column 3 is 2c minus minus basically c minus a minus b which is the same thing as 2c minus c plus a plus b and that is a that is a plus b a plus b and 2c minus c is equal to c a plus b plus c and therefore you have uh, column three remains the same so you have one two b c minus a minus b minus b and now expanding along row one because you have two zeros here expanding along row one we have these are two these two are zero so you'll get basically a plus b plus c times one negative one raised to the power so this is the first row the third so to the fourth power times one which is the whole thing becomes just the one and then you have this determinant which is a plus b plus c and negative um, and negative negative a negative b negative c zero a plus b plus c and then of course you would get this is going to this is zero if you multiply you'll get a plus b plus c whole squared multiply it by this thing over here you'll get so this is a plus b plus c whole squared which is the same thing as a plus b plus c whole cube which is equal to your RHS right so that was question number 11 part 1 question number 11 part 1 Question number 11, part 2. Question number 11, part 2. You have, you want to prove that, you want to prove that x plus y plus 2z and x and y and z y plus c plus 2x y plus c plus 2x and y and z and x and z plus x plus 2y you want to prove that this is equal to 
So this is equal to 2 times x plus y plus z whole cube. So in order to prove this, again, your LHS is equal to um, your LHS is equal to um, your LHS is equal to basically this determined x plus y plus 2z and x and y and then you have z here and you have x plus sorry and then you have y plus z plus 2x and y and you have z plus x plus and z plus x plus 2y and then what you have is so now what you can do is that apply column one becomes applying column one becomes column one plus column two plus column three and um, so you have uh, so you have um, basically um, so column one is going to be equal to 2x plus 2y plus 2z 2x plus 2y plus 2z if I add all of these together uh, this becomes uh, 2z plus 2x plus 2y or 2x plus 2y plus 2z and this becomes 2x plus 2y plus 2z 2x plus 2y plus 2z and then you can write these as they are x y plus z plus 2x and x and y and y and z plus x plus 2y and then i can take taking out taking out 2x plus 2y plus 2z from column 1 we have we have basically uh, 2x plus 2y plus 2z times basically 1x and y and again 1x I'm sorry y plus z plus 2x and y and 1 and x and z plus x plus 2y and uh, we need to do a little bit of transformation by basically uh, applying r1 becomes R1 becomes R1 minus R2, R1 minus R2, and R2 becomes R2 becomes R2 minus R3. So row 1 becomes row 1 minus row 2, which means that you have 2x plus 2y plus 2z, and row 1 minus row 2 so 1 minus 1 is equal to 0 x you would get basically x minus y minus z minus 2x and negative 2x plus x is equal to negative x negative y negative z negative x negative y negative z and then y minus y is equal to 0 and row 2 becomes row 2 minus row 3 so 1 minus 1 is equal to 0 and uh, basically then you have um, y plus z plus 2x minus x which gives you 2x minus x is x plus y plus z right so that is x plus y plus z and this minus this becomes this minus this becomes y minus 
uh, z plus x plus 2y, which is basically y minus z minus x minus 2y, which is negative x, uh, negative 2y plus y is equal to negative y negative z, which gives you basically negative x, negative y, negative z, and the third row is written as it is, so 1x and, uh, well, I write it as x plus 2y plus z plus z. And therefore you have, and therefore you have, uh, now, if I expand this along the column 1, now if I expand this, along column one we have we have basically we have basically two x plus two y plus two z and these two are zero so you will get basically uh, times negative one raised to the so this is the the third row the first comes up to the fourth power times one the whole thing becomes one so you can forget about them and then you have this determinant here, which is negative x, negative y, negative z, and 0, and x plus y plus z, and negative x, negative y, negative z. And then you can, this becomes basically a 0 when you multiply. You can write this as negative of x plus y plus z. And you can write this as negative of x plus y plus z. When you multiply them together, you'll get positive x plus y plus z whole squared. So this becomes times x plus y plus z whole squared. And if I take a 2 out from these three terms, I'll get 2 times x plus y plus z times x plus y plus z whole squared which is the same thing as 2 times x plus y plus z whole cube and that is equal to your RHS which is equal to your RHS that is basically question number 11 part 2 now question number 12 is, okay, so the next question is question number 12, which is basically, this question has only one part, which is, we have a, you want to prove that, you want to prove that basically, this is the case that basically this determinant 1x and x squared, x squared 1x and x x squared 1, this determinant is equal to, is equal to basically 1 minus x cube whole squared. So, uh, your LHS, your LHS is equal to this determinant 1x and x squared, x squared 1 and x, x, x squared and 1. Now here if I apply C1 becomes, if I apply C1 gives C1 plus C2 plus C3, we have, then this will be equal to basically 1 plus x plus x squared. And over here I will have x and x squared. 1 plus x plus x squared. And here I have 1 and x. And here I have 1 plus x plus x squared and x squared and 1. And now taking out, 
taking out 1 plus x plus x squared from column 1. In column 1 we have we have basically 1 plus x plus x squared times this determined as 1x and x squared 1 1 and x and 1x squared and 1 and then you have you can you can do basically a couple of transformations meaning that you can apply applying R1 becomes R1 minus R2 and R2 becomes R2 minus R3 and therefore you will have 1 plus x plus x squared and so R1 becomes R1 minus R2 meaning that 1 minus 1 is equal to 0 x minus 1 is equal to x minus 1 and you have x squared minus x and r2 becomes r2 minus r3 which is 1 minus 1 is equal to 0 1 minus x squared and x minus 1 and r3 becomes remains the same and then uh, here you can see that you have uh, <coughs> Here you can see that you have basically um, 1 minus x 1 minus x you can take out from r1 and r2 so if you take it from from here you'll get a 0 from here you'll get a negative 1 from here you will get basically x squared you can write it as you can write it as x times x minus 1. So x minus 1 you can take out. Um, so basically my goal is to take out x minus 1 from row 1 and row 2. From this I can I can take out, meaning that I can write this as negative 1 minus x. Negative, actually, x minus 1. I'm sorry, we want to take 1 minus x out. We want to take 1 minus x out. So taking out, taking out 1 minus x from R1 and R2 and R2. So then I'm going to write this as uh, I'm going to write this as basically instead of x times x minus 1, I'm going to write it as negative of x times 1 minus x. So 1 minus x and put a negative sign here and 1 minus x squared, I can write it as 1 squared minus x squared, which is the same thing as a squared minus b squared which is a minus b times a plus b which gives me 1 minus x times 1 1 plus x and then i can take out the 1 minus x out so this is 1 minus x times 1 plus x and here i can write this as negative of 1 minus x so Basically, then I can take 1 minus x out from, from these two rows, which will give me 1 plus x plus x squared. And 1 minus x I'm taking out here from row 1 and row 2. That have 0 and negative 1 and negative x and 0 and 1 plus x and negative 1 and 1 and x squared and 1 then what you can do is basically since you have two zeros along the first column you can expand along the first column expanding along 
C1, we have, so these two would be zero, so you'll get one plus x plus x squared times one minus x, and then over here you would get basically negative one raised to the power, so first column, third row to the fourth power times one, the whole thing becomes one, and then you will have this determinant as negative 1, negative x, 1 plus x, and negative 1, which is the same thing as positive 1 minus negative x times 1 plus x, which is the same thing as 1 minus negative x minus x squared, which is the same thing as 1 plus x plus x squared. 1 plus x plus x squared. So that is the same thing as... Now our RHS was... was basically 1 minus uh, x cubed whole squared. Basically, the RHS was 1 minus x cubed all the squared. <laughs> okay, so now it seems to me that, I mean, we have actually made a mistake here. And that is basically when we take, when we took out the 1 minus x from R1 and also from R2, that means that you are taking 1 minus x out twice which means that that gives you 1 minus x raised to the power 2. And then basically you have 1 plus x plus x squared, 1 plus x plus x squared times 1 minus x whole squared. And uh, that has to be written in this form, 1 minus x cubed whole squared. Okay, so now what I, what I want to show you is actually not the standard way of doing this. I mean, the standard way of writing this expression in terms of uh, in terms of one minus x cube is basically algebra. I mean, you have to use some identities or something like that and write basically whatever this expression is in terms of one minus x cube. But now the situation is like this. I know that I know that basically this expression has to be written in terms of 1 minus x cubed. And I know that this expression is actually divisible by 1 minus x cubed because in the solution it's actually been written in terms of 1 minus x cubed. And of course in the question I've been asked to write this expression in terms of 1 minus x cubed. And also I can see the solution and I know that this expression that I have so far up to here is actually correct. There is nothing wrong with it. Now having all of this in mind, now at this, at this point I don't really know how to write this expression in terms of 1 minus x. I really don't. Okay. And I want to solve the question and it's not about it's not about uh, whether you can do it or not or anything like that. It's just that sometimes you're doing something and of course you somehow, it's not about examination or anything. In the examination you either write something, you don't write something, you lose a mark, you gain a mark, that's, that's for the sake of the examination. But then sometimes you're working on, I don't know, something, some project, for example, physics, electronics, some, something you're doing, and you have to, you have to, to, to somehow get your work done. You cannot say that I can't do it. It's just, no, nobody would accept it from you. You would, if you do it a couple of times, you would lose your job, right? So, or if, or even if you don't have a job and you're doing something for the whatever it is that you're doing, you couldn't do it. So now one way to do this is, since I know all of those things that I just said, I know that this expression, if I multiply all of these together, 
that this can actually be written in terms of 1 minus x cubed. So what I will do is that I will first, I will multiply all of these, all of these three expressions, all of them together, meaning that I will write this as 1 plus x plus x squared. Of course, you have to be a little bit careful because if you make mistakes, then you have to go back many steps, which is not very economical. And and then over here I have um, and and one one interesting thing that you can see here is that probably you haven't paid attention to this. I hadn't paid attention to this before. If I have 1 plus x plus x squared, and, and if I multiply these two expressions together, I get 1 plus x plus 1 plus x plus x squared whole squared. And probably you don't know any formulas to do this. But what you can do is, we of course we will verify this. You can write it as 1 plus x plus x squared whole squared. And you can use basically a plus b whole squared, which is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, right? And then you can, based on this, you can write this as 1 plus x whole squared plus x squared whole squared plus whole squared plus 2 times 1 plus x times x squared. And if I expand this, I will get basically 1 squared is 1 plus x squared plus 2 times x plus x raised to the power 4. And then I have 2 times x squared plus 2 times x cubed. And that gives me basically x raised to the power 4 and plus 2 times x cubed plus 2 times x cubed. Now, 2 times x squared plus x squared is 3 times x squared and 2x and 1. So, if I do it this way, I will get this expression. If I do it the other way, if I just simply multiply, let's see what we get over there. So, I have 1 plus x plus x squared. I want to multiply it by 1 plus x plus x squared. So 1 times the whole, 1 times this equal to itself, 1 plus x plus x squared. x times that would be x plus x squared plus x cubed. And x squared times that would be plus x squared plus x cubed plus x raised to the power 4. Which gives you x raised to the power 4. 2 times x cubed. And... 3 times x squared, 1, 2, 3, plus 3 times x squared, plus 2 times x, plus 1, which is exactly the same thing, right? So this expression, this expression becomes, I mean, this part, these two multiplied together gives me this expression, which is basically x raised to the power 4 plus 2 times x cubed plus 3 times x squared plus 2 times x plus 1. And if you multiply that by 1 minus x whole squared, you will get so 1 minus x whole squared is equal to, as you know, 1 squared 1 plus x squared minus 2x. So instead of that, I will write 1 plus x squared minus 2x, 1 plus x squared minus 2x, and then I, I will multiply. So 1 times, 1 times basically this expression is itself, so you have x raised to the power 4 plus 2 times x cubed plus 3 times x squared plus 2x plus 1, and then I have x squared times this, which gives me x raised to the power 6 plus 2 times x raised to the power 5, plus 3 times x raised to the power 4, plus 2 times x cubed, plus x squared, and negative 2 times x times this gives me um, negative 2 times x raised to the power 5, 
uh, negative 2 times 2 is equal to 4, x raised to the power 4, negative 6 times, um, negative 6 times x raised to the power 3, negative 4 times x squared, negative 2x, which is equal to, now I have x raised to the power 6 here, and uh, only one of them, so, so I have x raised to the power 6, x raised to the power 5, x raised to the power 5, they will cancel out, x raised to the power 4, I have 1 over shear, I have 1 over shear, I have 1 over shear, so that is 4, 3 x raised to the power 4 plus x raised to the power, that's 4 times, they will cancel out, and you have x raised to the power 3, so you have 2 times plus 2 times is 6, is 4 times, um, so 4 times x cubed minus 6 times x cubed is negative 2 times x cubed, 4, negative 6 plus 4 is equal to negative 2, x cubed, x cubed, and x cubed. And then I have x squared, which is basically over shear, and over shear, and over shear. 3 plus 1 is equal to 4, minus 4 is equal to 0. And then I have these two you can cancel out. And the only thing that remains is this 1 here, and plus a 1, right? Now, in order, now this, this expression, I want to see if I can write it in terms of 1 minus x cubed. Now this is 1 minus x cubed whole squared, which is the same thing as 1 minus x cubed times 1 minus x cubed, right? So if I divide this by 1 minus x cubed, let's, let, let's see what we get over there. So I make a screenshot here. And, and put this over here, the other monitor. And if I divide x raised to the power 6 minus 2 times x cubed plus 1, if I divide by 1 minus x cubed, now if I want to write 1 minus x cubed, you know that you have to write your expressions in standard form. Standard form would be x negative x cubed plus 1. So I write negative x cubed plus 1. And I will divide. So for dividing, I write x raised to the power 6 divided by negative x raised to the power 3. You'll get x raised to the power 3 here, so you'll get negative x raised to the power 3. So I have a negative x raised to the power 3 here. And uh, and um, so if I multiply, I'll get positive x raised to the power 6, negative x raised to the power 3. Multiply this by a negative 1, and then add them, meaning that you're subtracting. You're adding the, the, adding the algebraic opposite of this to this expression up here, meaning that you're subtracting this expression from this, from this expression up here. Meaning that if you adding and subtracting is the same thing, except that in subtracting, you're adding the algebraic opposite of whatever it is subtracting to the first thing. Meaning that if I write 2, for example, minus 1, that's the same thing as 2 plus negative 1. If I add the algebraic opposite of 1 to 2, that means that I'm subtracting a 1 from 2, right? And I'll do the same thing over here. I'll add the algebraic opposite of this expression to this expression. So multiplying this by negative 1, I'll get negative and positive. And so these two will cancel out. I'll have negative 2x cubed plus x cubed. That gives me negative x cubed. And I can bring down this, I can bring down this 1 plus 1. 
Now negative x cubed divided by negative x cubed gives me a 1. And now if I multiply, I'll get negative x cubed plus 1. Again, if I, again, if I multiply this by negative 1, positive, negative, add, and I get a 0. And you can see that it's exactly divisible by negative x cubed plus 1, or 1 minus x cubed, which means that this tells me that x raised to the power 6 minus 2x cubed plus 1 is actually the same thing as basically 1 plus or 1 minus x cubed times 1 minus x cubed, right? Or it's the same thing as 1 minus x cubed raised to the second power. This is the expression that I had here. This is the expression that I had here. And therefore, I can write it as 1 minus x cubed whole squared, which is equal to your RHS. Okay. Now, again, this is probably not acceptable by your, in your examination or whatever it is that you're doing, meaning that you might have to actually show this using algebra that that the two expressions are somehow connected to one another but um, i think you can actually use for example um, for example you can use one minus x cube you can write it as one cube minus x cube and then find some formula for this meaning that a cube minus b cube and you i'm not good at this uh, specifically at this formula and then somehow figure out how to do this, but um, I don't really know how to do that. And that gives me a way to get my things done otherwise. And well, I leave it as, as an exercise to you to, um, to show us or to, you can, you can, you can put that somewhere on, on, on the internet and show us how you can actually do write those steps in algebra okay so now this was question number 12 we have two more questions to go and actually four more questions to go so we will do that in the next video see you in the next video and thank you